Blowinsies. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Hey everybody, my name is CJ Johnson and um, I am passionate about helping people who are over the age of 40 to look and feel their best and age the way that they want to age. And that's what my company is all about, Age Well with CJ. We can do things differently, and frankly, we need to do things differently because our bodies are different. We can do things differently that will have an impact on how we age. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Tonight, we're going to be talking about sleep. But something that I was thinking of today, and by the way, I'm just going to once, give me one second here before we get started. Just want to change a little bit on my tech here. Okay. I was talking to a friend today and I felt pretty disheartened. He's a really wonderful guy. He's younger than I am. He's about two or three years younger than I am, but he's probably a good 60 to 70 pounds overweight and he tweaked a knee. He was lamenting the fact that it, he's just mentally depressed because at one point in time he was an athlete and physically he was a lot different and now everything seems to be taking a toll on his body because of the condition that he's in. My comment to him was, we can change. That's the wonderful thing about being over age 40 is we have already reinvented ourselves probably once or twice in our life. I'm 50, almost 55, I'll be 55 this summer and I have definitely reinvented myself multiple times. Uh, especially within the last several years. So that's the great news is you can reinvent yourself, but you're not going to be able to do that unless you get a lot of sleep. So I'm going to see if I can tune in to make sure that I got your questions. If you have any questions, put them down below. How many, uh, here's the question of the day. I'm really kind of curious. How many hours of sleep do you get in the evening? I will tell you my um, sleep is I get uh, I get eight hours, seven and a half for sure, up to eight. And sleep is so important because that's when our bodies regenerate ourselves. So tonight we're going to dive into why it's important, how much you should get, because there's a lot of myths about how much sleep you should have, especially as we age. Yes, sleep changed. No, our sleep needs really don't change. And then I'm going to give you 13 different things, lucky number 13, 13 different things that you can do to help to help you to sleep better. So I bring this up and this is like one of my favorite least favorite pictures of myself. But when I was losing weight, one of the things that you really need to do, especially if you're in a weight loss program, is you need to make sure that you're monitoring your sleep. If your body is not getting an, a lot of rest, you are going to have a hard time losing weight. And that's when I started really watching how much I slept. In this picture, I was 38 years old. I weighed well over 250 pounds. I was a size 20. Don't know exactly how much I weighed because, um, frankly, I wouldn't get on a scale. <laughs> uh, so I've obviously made some changes and made some differences in my body. And that's why I was telling you that story just a few minutes ago. You can reinvent yourself. I've reinvented myself business-wise. I've reinvented myself physically. And I've, I've helped a lot of people to do that and have been privileged to be there, to be a part of that journey for them and to see them do that. And you can reinvent yourself. But one of those core things is it starts to sleep. And I know that as we age, it, it starts to suck. It starts to stink. So how much sleep do we need? Here's what we're going to talk about tonight. How to get more sleep. First of all, what changes after 40? Because there really are some things that do change with our body. And when I talk about body changes, I'm not necessarily talking about those being bad things. If you look at the, the time when we were a baby, you know, how many hours a day does a baby sleep? And then you need naps uh, up until you're six or seven. You're probably thinking I could use a nap now, right? And then uh, it, beyond where our bodies are always changing. So what we need to understand is how our bodies are changing and to make changes in our behaviors so that our bodies can thrive. That's what we need to do. And that's what we need to do about sleep. I told you there were some myths about how much sleep we get. As the biggest myth is this, is as you get older, you don't need as much sleep. 
we're going to kind of bust that myth tonight. And then here comes those 13 tips for better sleep. Oh, by the way, I want to make sure that as you stick around to the end, I got a great freebie for you. It is my 25 tricks to staying fit without feeling overwhelmed. It, it is truly my best resource that I have ever offered because it's the things that help me to stay fit. And I will tell you, sleep is definitely, I've got a couple of these sleep tricks inside of that. Uh, and that's for you. I'll give you uh, all the information on how to get to it at the end. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Give me a little bit of a thumbs up. You ready to go? Tell me how much sleep you get. If you're on, tell me how many hours of sleep a night do you get. So here's our first thing. By the way, these are just a little disclaimer. Just trying to help you. If you have serious sleep issues, and some of us do, you need to be seeking a professional because not having enough sleep is definitely going to take a toll on your health. Uh, so these are for somebody who's maybe changing just a little bit and it hasn't become a crisis problem. So if it gets to that level, make sure that you seek the appropriate help. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Here we go. Whoop. I went one too far. We're going to back up just one second. Okay. All right. I keep doing that again and again and again. Here's what I mean to do is put myself back into the screen. Technology. Okay. So if you're over 40, here's some of the things that are happening that really are changing. And it's not your imagination. So first of all, a lot of these things, they know that they're happening to our bodies, but they're not really sure why they're happening, happening to our bodies. And sometimes they're not really sure what some of the great answers are, okay? But the first thing is, yes, you are probably having a harder time falling asleep than you once did. It's not your imagination. We're going to talk about ways that you can make it more routine. Okay, routine is really important when it comes to sleep. There are ways that you can make it more routine. You just can't take it for granted anymore, like a lot of things when we were a little bit younger. The other thing is staying asleep is getting harder. So as we age, some people start to experience a change in sleep. Gee, I can fall asleep, but I can't stay asleep. I'm up at 2 o'clock or I'm up at 3 o'clock and I can't seem to stay asleep. You're not imagining that either because what tends to change as we age is the amount of time that we spend in REM. And I think everyone's probably heard that multiple times. REM is our deepest level of sleep. Um, we require, I think it's about four hours of night of REM sleep to really have our body perform well and feel better. Our level uh, or our amount of REM sleep changes as we age. So those sleep stages are changing for us. So the falling asleep, the staying asleep, you know, changes are definitely happening. So you're really not imagining that. Just like everything else that's changing in our body, you need to be proactive. And that's what we're going to focus on is the solution part. How do you get proactive? Now, the, the biggest thing is this. Here's that sleep myth I was talking about is you hear a lot of people say, oh, I'm getting older. I don't need as much sleep as I used to. Mm, I got to tell you, the science just isn't there because here's what it's saying is adults 18 to 64 need seven to nine hours of sleep. Now, here's a little caveat. The National Sleep um, Organization, and I'm going to link to, they have great resources. Uh, absolutely awesome. I'm going to put a link down in the show notes for later so that you can go and check it out. Right now they're saying 65 plus 7 to 8 hours of sleep per night. It's probably a lot more than most people 65 plus are getting. But here's the other deal. Uh, the science is out. They're saying it really might be between seven and nine hours of sleep. So here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about, look at your day, on average, how much are you sleeping? And let's see if we can give you some suggestions to get that to seven hours of sleep. Okay, does that kind of sound good? I'm going to take a look. Remember, if you have any any comments, make sure you put them down in the section, and I'd be happy to answer them. But let me know how many hours of sleep you're getting. So we're working on seven to nine hours of sleep. So here are some of the things that you can do. And this is the one thing as we walk through these 13 things. Here's what I want you to think about. I want you to make sure that you make sleep a priority. We're not 20-something anymore. And there's a lot of things we can't take for granted. So you need to put a little bit of focus time 
on sleep if, you're, if your body's changing and you're having a little bit of an issue with this. So let's make it a priority. So let's start off on those 13 things that we're going to do. Okay, number one, get a sleep schedule. And I'll tell you, one of the best little tools for me sleep schedule I'm an iPhone user one of the best little tools is an app called a bedtime so what bedtime allows me to do is it sets a time for me to go to sleep and a time for me to wake up now what I love about the alarms is I it, let's say bedtime is 10 o'clock about 10 minutes to 10 you get a little notification on your phone just something very quiet that says in order to get your whatever let's just say you put in eight hours of sleep in order to get your eight hours of sleep you need to be in bed in 10 minutes what that little alarm does is it gives me the opportunity to shut down for the evening on the other side in the morning the alarm that goes off, I get to choose the sound, it is designed to wake me from asleep gently. So it doesn't go off, you know, you remember those blaring alarm clocks we had as teenagers, those uh, uh, clock radios, meh, 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 it sounded like a fire engine going off. This is something that's much uh, more gentle and it's very easy to wake up to. And best of all, you can pick your sound. So set a sleep schedule and you can use that kind of tool to do it. Now here's what I wanna caution you on. Sometimes we have taken and said, okay, I, I'm Monday through Friday I'm gonna sleep, but Saturday and Sundays I'm gonna just blow it completely off. I'm either gonna stay up late, wake up early, I don't have to go to work, whatever. You really wanna try and do your best to stick to a sleep schedule on a consistent basis. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, temperature. Anybody know what the ideal temperature is in a room? Might surprise you. 60 to 67 degrees is the ideal temperature to sleep at. If it's too hot, your body does a lot of working to adjust to the warm um, the warm temperature. So you really want the room at 60 to 67 degrees. Now one other hint, and this again, this comes from sleep.org. They said if you're one of those people that has a very hard time falling asleep, you might want to consider wearing socks. There's something about keeping our feet warm that helps our body temperature to regulate itself more quickly and for us to get, to fall asleep faster. Okay, so that's the ideal temperature. So make sure that your room is set at temperature. Have a relaxing bedtime routine. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with number one, setting that sleep schedule. What can you do before you go to bed that will relax you? For some people that's reading, for some people that could be taking a nice warm bath. If you're trying to fall asleep at 10 o'clock, I told you my little device goes off, my phone goes off about 10 minutes to 10, but truly I'm shutting down about 9.30. I'm, I'm trying to do some things that are very relaxing, put the day away, shut off my brain, who has problems shutting off their brain. I have a great article about how to shut off your brain. Uh, I did a blog post on that a couple of years ago when I was having a hard time shutting off my brain. I have some even better suggestions than that, so I'll make sure and put that in the show notes too. But if you get this nice relaxing routine, something, and again, routine implies that you do it every night. So set the sleep schedule and do the routine. Now, what kind of things could you make part of that routine? You could use meditation. Meditation can be a really easy way to help to shut off the stresses of the day and to relax. Best of all, again, I'm going to pick up this little baby, right? We got a little phone here, a little iPhone. If you have an iPhone, you can get meditation apps. You don't have to go anything into anything big or long. You can get apps that will teach you about meditation. And for the most part, even if you're starting to meditate for two, three, or four minutes, those are things that will help to control your stress levels and help to get you ready for a good night's sleep. Another thing, aromatherapy. Uh, lavender, which has kind of been, I've talked about it on this show multiple times. Lavender is called the Swiss army knife of essential oils. And, you know, it's kind of like that do-it-all oil, right? The Swiss army knife. Well, one of the properties of lavender is it helps in terms of relaxation. Uh, a few years ago, 
uh, a company that I work with that I think makes some really fantastic products started making some essential oils. I purchased both a lavender and a blend called Unwind, and that blend also had lavender and bergamot and things like that. And my husband, John, has always had a little bit of a tough time sleeping. So at night I got a very small diff diffuser and before I went to bed, I, I typically go to bed a little bit before he does, I would just diffuse a little bit of this on his pillow. Didn't really say anything to him, just was kind of waiting for him to give me some feedback. And about a week later or so, he said to me one night I forgot and he said to me, he said, hey, whatever stuff you were putting on my pillow, you didn't put it on last night, and I wasn't sleeping as well. <laughs> so aromatherapy can be extremely helpful for relaxation and falling asleep. So lavender blends, unwind is wonderful. I will put a uh, link in the show notes down below if you want some information on either one of those, but aromatherapy can be outstanding way to help you to relax. When I take my bath at night, one of the things that I do is I use uh, essential oils and I put those into the tub with Epsom salts and those really help me to relax. You need to have, <coughs> excuse me, you need to have an electronics curfew. Just like you had a curfew when you were a kid, you need to turn this off. The blue light does not, it, it messes with our system and it can really keep us alert and, and do a lot of things to our brain that we don't want to do. So I definitely recommend shutting down the phone early, at least now a lot of studies say an hour to two hours and I realize that's probably not doable for most people. Can you try and shut it down a half hour early, perhaps? Uh, another thing you could do is you can do a UV filter. So if, as an example, you're surfing the net. Now, this doesn't work with apps, but if you're surfing the net, you can apply a UV filter to your phone, and it's going to filter out the light that really gives us grief. Uh, there are, uh, It's the blue light. There's a variety, and I think I said UV. I meant to say blue light. Um, there is a variety of filters that are available for purchase in the app store and you could purchase one of those and put that on your phone. So we got six down, seven to go. All right, let's see. Hey John, how are you? So John is watching and hope if you've got any questions, John, I know John's been struggling with his sleep. How are you doing with your sleep? How many, how many, how many hours a night are you averaging? And, and I think it's up for you. So maybe put that down in the comments below if you would. So we're halfway through. Let's go ahead and we're going to get into our next little section. I'm taking a drink behind the curtain, right? Okay, talking about curfews, we talked about putting a curfew on your phone. Let's do a little caffeine curfew. So caffeine is definitely one of those things that can bother us at night. And I think we're probably pretty aware of that. So give yourself a caffeine curfew. For some of us, that might be 6 o'clock at night. For some of us, that might be 3 o'clock in the afternoon. For some of us, it might be lunchtime. But if you find yourself having a hard time falling asleep, start early in the day. Cut yourself off of caffeine at noon. Now, and I'm not talking about just regular types of things. You need to look for different foods that contain caffeine, like chocolate. If you're a late night chocolate eater, that has a lot of caffeine in it. You also want to look at things like soda. So it's not just our coffees. We tend to think of coffee when it's caffeine, not necessarily soda. So give yourself, if you're having a hard time, pick a time, give yourself a caffeine curfew talked about naps in the very beginning and how kids love naps and I tell you sometimes a good nap is a really wonderful thing I love to sit in the chair and I gotta tell you on a Sunday afternoon turn on some golf and it's not that golf bores me I was a golf pro for a long long time I love golf but boy it's great to nap too <laughs> and I could take a nap now if I take a 15 or a 20 minute nap uh, that can be very refreshing but if something gets a little bit longer that can really be disruptive to sleep what I suggest that you do is set an alarm on your phone so that you don't take too long of a nap. Here's one that you may not know. It's tart cherry juice. And it's, I'm going to say this wrong, Montancero is the type of cherry. I will put a link down below in the show notes. Is the type of cherry juice that you want to, to, to use. But studies have shown that what this does is this helps with the, um, it helps to create some of the, the 
hormones. So we've all heard of tryptophan, right? You know, tryptophan from Turkey that helps to make us sleepy. This helps to induce some of that tryptophan into our system and helps to bring in the sleep cycle. So tart cherry juice can be a great way to do that. Now, if you don't want the extra calories that come along with ch cherry juice, and this is specifically tart cherry juice, um, you could use a, a pill. In scientific studies right now, they're saying that the pills are just as good for you as the juices. So that's something else that you can try. Just like you need a caffeine curfew, you need to watch alcohol. Alcohol dehydrates our body. We don't get to the same levels of sleep, that sort of thing. So be really careful with the amount of alcohol you're drinking. And just like anything, alcohol in moderation, hey, it's okay. But if you're probably having two or three drinks in the evening or two or three glasses of wine, it's likely that that's really disrupting your sleep, especially considering that the majority of people consume alcohol a little bit later in the day. Kind of like just consuming some of that caffeine. It can disrupt your sleep. Exercise daily, even if it's a walk. Uh, it has Studies have shown all the good hormones that exercise releases for us help us to sleep better as well as more soundly. So we get to sleep a little bit faster, we stay asleep a little bit better. Exercise on a daily basis. And that's not saying, hey, I have to exercise myself so hard that I go into a sleep coma. What I mean by exercise on a daily basis is get up and do something. It gets those hormones going and you're going to feel a lot better and it generally will make sleep a little bit better. When is the last time you changed out your mattress and your pillow? Okay, so mattress, most of the time, recommending a change in mattress is at 10 years. And sometimes you're not even feeling that a mattress needs a change, but it really does. Because what happens is if you're a side sleeper or a back sleeper and our mattress isn't supporting us, we're putting a lot of pressure on those joints. And that makes it more difficult for us to stay in a sound sleep. One of the things that I changed recently was I changed pillows. And before I talk about the pillow we sleep on, I'm going to talk about the leg pillow. I started putting a small leg pillow between my um, thighs because I was having some back issues. I think I've been telling you about these back issues I had. I hurt myself skin. And, and um, I've been having some back issues. I have to tell you, this leg pillow has relieved some of those symptoms I was getting because I was a side sleeper and I was taking my body instead of being stacked, I was tilted and I was putting a lot of pressure on my back, waking up very sore. So um, pillows, a leg pillow could be important. How about the last time you changed your head pillow? It's depending on the quality of pillow, you want to change your pillow every couple of years. So if you are feeling shoulder, neck pain, those sorts of things, take a look at your pillow. It is probably time to do that. One other thing that you can try, and the jury's out. My mom just got one of these. So I'm going to let you know. A friend of hers recommended to her, said I had a hard time sleeping. I started with some light therapy. It has helped to improve my, cir my circadian rhythms. And circadian rhythms are basically our ability to know night and day and, and how we sleep. It controls all of that type of things inside of our body. And this light therapy, he t this person takes it and when he's working in the morning, he's got a little tiny device. It's about this big. You can actually get them on Amazon. And he just puts the light there so that when he is working, he, he gets this light and he swears by it. He says, everybody I have recommended it to is getting great success with it. So I cannot at this point in time give you personal recommendation um, from my mom, but I can tell you it's working great for her friend and a host of all his friends. Uh, so you can buy those on Amazon. And again, it's Circadian Rhythm. I will put a link down in the show notes. I'll show, share with you the one that she purchased. I think they're right around $60. So I said 13 ways to get better sleep. I added one. It was 14 ways to get better sleep. So again, if you want to get more sleep, remember your body is changing over 40, but that doesn't mean you need less sleep. You still need seven to nine hours of sleep. I know I gave you a ton of tips. You can go back into this. Pick one or two things. One or two. Start with those one or two things. And if you're only going to start with one or two, here's what I recommend. Sleep schedule. Sleep schedule and a relaxing routine at bedtime. Those are probably two of the things that can definitely start you on a plan to, or on a, on a direction to start to get better sleep. So pick one or two things, 
Get yourself going and start getting better sleep. Now, I did tell you that if you stuck around to the end, I had my best stuff coming for you. That's the 25 tricks to staying fit without feeling overwhelmed. Um, th this is truly, these are the things that have helped me to lose and keep off 100 pounds for the last 14 years. So some of my best stuff in there. You can get that by going to agewellwithcj.com slash 25 tricks it is all there for you now next week um, these have been coinciding with the whole life challenge we are coming to the end of this particular challenge our next one's going to be starting July 7th so you're going to hear a little bit more information about that but next week to finish this off what we're going to be talking about is how to make change inside of your life and it is the four it's truly the four cornerstones, or what I call the big four, that helped me to take all these 25 tricks and tips and to put them into a package to be able to create lasting change and get the healthy life that I deserve. And I know that if I can do it, you can too. So I'll see you back here next Tuesday night at 6 p.m. because together we can train smart, live bold, and age well. Good night, everybody.